So in order for something to be on the unit circle, it's got some x, y, and it's at some distance r from the origin. That distance on the unit circle is just one. And with any point on a circle, you can always just drop a line straight down the x-axis, and then on the x-axis, trace over to that line. You get a, a right triangle. This bottom length is x, this side length is y. So for any point on the unit circle, centered at the origin, you can always remember this relationship that x squared plus y squared is just one. So that's all we're gonna do here. So we're gonna show that three fourths squared plus negative root seven fourths squared is one. So it's not too bad. Got that. This is nine sixteenths. This is seven sixteenths. Wouldn't you know it's sixteen sixteenths? You square root it, you get yourself one. Okay? So check. Equals. So that, that's pretty simple to show something's on the unit circle. Um, take each coordinate, square it, add them up. Do we need to see more points like this, more questions like this? Does this one make sense? Okay, all right. Number 10 is find the missing coordinate of a point that's given. Uh, if you know the quadrant of the point and if you know the, you know, one of the coordinates. So this is number 10. Uh, the point they give us is an unknown x coordinate. The y coordinate is negative 7, 26. And the quadrant is quadrant 4. So, what we've got here is like this. We've got a point on the unit circle. We know the y value is negative 7 25 so it's down here somewhere, but it's in quadrant 4, which means it's somewhere right in here. Okay, quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4. So we've, we've got to find the x coordinate, and the x coordinate is going to be a positive number because of where it's located. So what do we do here? Well, we use this exact same relationship, Pythagorean theorem, to say that whatever this is, square it, and we add it to this negative seven point fifths squared, we should get one. Let's just work this out. X squared plus forty nine over six hundred twenty five, I think, uh, is one. Also rewrite one as 625 over 625. Well, and then we uh, just solve. The x squared is subtracting from both sides. Uh, subtracting 50 gives us 575. So 576 over 625. Uh, and I don't know what that is as a perfect square. It probably is one. Uh, something. So we'll square root both sides and get x is the square root of 576 over 25. And then the question is, was it positive or negative? Because we do have to remember that when we're doing that sort of thing, with the square root something that's been squared, we need to determine if it's positive or negative. Because it's in quadrant four, we know it has to be positive. So it's positive. There it is. Okay. Questions on that sort of thing? It's usually you are just using the Pythagorean theorem still, but you're also using a little bit of more information Know, if the x coordinate is positive or negative, y coordinate positive or negative. We're good? All right. 
uh, a point to add on WebAssign, just plug this in. Don't need to actually figure it out with the calculator, right? It'll say that's fine. On a written quiz or test, just write that down. <laughs> Don't need to figure out what number it is. 26. Okay, 26 I chose because this is just a question asking about terminal points. Um, find the terminal point on the unit circle determined by a given value of t. So t is what they use to represent an angle. And here we've got an angle of five pi over two. An angle of five pi over two may look foreign to you, but it's, it's, it's not something that's terribly difficult to, to understand. Uh, if you look at the unit circle, which is what we're doing you know, in, in all these problems, the unit circle has a radius of one, which means it has a circumference of two pi. Okay, that's the circumference. So if we start here on the x-axis, and we just start traveling around the circle, halfway around, we get to a, a total length covered pi. All the way around, we get to a total length of two pi covered. So this is really just a, a length that we've traveled around the unit circle. And, and so five pi over two, uh, it's just a length we've traveled around the unit circle starting from the point one zero. Now the way I like to think of these is by uh, thinking about angles here in this first quadrant. Um, I see pi over two. So if, if halfway around is pi, then half that, so a quarter of the way around is actually pi over two. This is pi over two up here. We've got five of those. So let's go five quarters around the circle. So where do we go? So we go one pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two, four pi over two, five pi over two. Right there. So what are we being asked? We're being asked, what is the point on the unit circle after we've gone around the unit circle? One and a quarter times. Well, it's straight up, so there's an x coordinate of zero, and the y coordinate is just one. The radius of the unit circle is one. The point is zero. Questions on that one? Got another one like this, so 32, just a different angle. Three pi, oops, excuse me, two pi over three. Well, it's five pi over three, but all the same. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna look at a unit circle. I'm gonna think, well, here's pi, halfway around is pi. Right? If I get rid of this two, or if I just think about the two, we're, we're talking about two thirds of pi. So two thirds of halfway around the circle. So I just look at this upper circle and I split it into thirds as best I can. So here we go, it's right here. Right? Origin here. One third, two thirds, three thirds. So we are right here. Then the question is, what is that point? Right? What are the x and y coordinates of that? Well, do you have them memorized yet? Nick, don't let me down. Who we'll talked about this? <laughs> All right, so if you don't have some memorized, these are some these are some good things to commit to memory, and I don't think it really takes all that long to commit them to memory. Um, so this, this angle is two pi over three. So 
So this angle must be pi over three. Okay. This is pi over three. So what I'm going to do then is just consider a pi over three angle triangle, right? If we know our special triangles, pi over three is related to a 60 degree angle. That's a 60 degree angle if you put it in degrees. So this is the same as a 60, 30, 60, 90 triangle. We know the radius is one. I believe that in this, in the readings that they tried to drill into your head that there's a special relationship here. Um, and I'm trying to remember right now what it is, as you are, uh, has something to do with a one half and something to do with a root three over two. Let's see, for a 60 degree angle, it's, this is one half and this is root three over two. Now the easy way to remember that is to remember which one's bigger. Which one is bigger, root three over two or one over two? Root three over two. Okay. So, bigger angle, bigger length. Smaller angle, smaller length. That's that's the easy way to. If you can have these two number, numbers in your head, to remember which one goes opposite which angle. So let's translate that here now. We've got one half this way, which means we're actually traveling to the left of the origin, the center of the origin. So we've got an x coordinate of negative one half. And a y coordinate, because we're going up, is positive root three over two. Uh, these numbers, as well as the number of root 2 over 2, definitely things to commit to memory. Uh, but I will say that it's really just those two, num those three numbers that you should commit to memory. And because of the Pythagorean theorem, you really only need to know two of them. I mean, if you can remember this one and this one, with the Pythagorean theorem, you can easily find the others. So, two numbers that you should, you should commit to memory. Um, I picked another one of these guys just to, um, to drive this one home. So, 38 has part A, B, and C, and D. So, here they give you. Um, the angle, and they're asking for the reference number, uh, but I'm also going to, where, where this is simple enough, we're also going to look into the point on the unit circle. Okay. So, first one is 9 pi. Our B is negative 5 pi over 4. Our C is uh, 25. Six and our D um, is four. This one I'm not going to be able to do. But all the others we can. Just being asked to find the reference angle. Now the reference angle is exactly what I looked at over here. We have this angle that we are interested in, right? This two pi three, but I. 
did not focus on that angle. Instead, I focused on this one, pi over three. That angle that's created in between the terminal uh, side of your angle and the x-axis is called the reference angle. So for any circle, for any angle, here's the x-axis. If I just start drawing angles, this is a reference angle. Here, this is the reference angle. Here, this is the reference angle. It's whatever angle is formed between that terminal edge of your angle and the x-axis. No matter where you end up, this angle right there is the reference angle. So let's find those reference angles. So for 9 pi, let's just look at where that gets us. Here's 0, here's pi, here's 2 pi, here's 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi, 8 pi, 9 pi. Right here. Here's the end edge of our angle. What's our reference angle? No. It is the x axis. A um, reference angle, uh, I'll call it angle R. You can see that. Uh, zero. Okay. Part B, negative 5 pi over 4. Um, normally in mathematics, going around counterclockwise in a positive direction. Seems a little counterintuitive, but uh, going around clockwise is the negative direction, which is the opposite direction when viewed from your side. Um, so here we go negative five, pi over four. We're just going in the clockwise direction as opposed to counterclockwise. Um, when I look at 5 pi over 4, I think fourths of pi, right? Here's pi, so I split it into fourths. Here's the other side, split it into fourths. I'm going to go this way, 5 fourths. Okay. Got negative 5 4. Quarter of the way around here. Negative 2 pi over 4. Negative 3 pi over 4. Negative 4 pi over 4. Negative 5 pi over 4. So, what is our reference angle? Well, it's this. And that's pi over 4. Great question. It's my understanding that reference angles are always positive. Okay. Um, it'll take me but a second to re confirm or refute that. It's positive. It's defined as the shortest distance along the unit circle between the terminal point and the x-axis. Shortest distance, if it is in fact, yeah, okay, they are in fact using it rigorously. So it's a distance, so it has to be non-negative. Okay. okay, great question. I did not even think about that. You do this enough and you're just like, yeah, it's just, <laughs> Hold on, response. Okay, 25 pi over 6. Here I'm going to do something a little different just to sort of show you how to do this in a 
in a faster way with really odd angles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at multiples of two pi. Okay, we can we can continue to do this, you know, counting business like I've shown you. That works really well for small numbers, you know. Uh, this one you could still do that if you count out 25, six. You know, we could go, okay, uh, here's zero, six, here's six, six, a pi, 12, six, 18, six, 24, six, 25, six, right? We could do this. Um, but what I just sort of talked about is a nicer way of finding that reference angle. You're looking at multiples of pi, and you're looking at subtracting them from your angle. So here, 9 pi, 25, 5 or 6, 5, 5 or 4. All we're looking at is, can I get all multiples of this thing taken away or added to, in the case of the negative, uh, that puts my angle somewhere in What n is this between zero and right? You're just asking yourself how many pies do I have to take away to shrink this angle down to something that's less than a 90 degree angle or pi over two angles. Here it's nine, clearly, I get zero, and that's in there. Here it's pi. If I add pi to this, it's four over pi over four. Then I get pi over four, negative pi over four, but that's my reference angle. Here, I'm clearly going to take away two pi, four pi. So it's 25 pi over six. That's really the same as pi over 6 plus 24 pi over 6. This is just 4 pi. 24 over 6. So I just need to take away 4 pi. And I've got my reference angle. Great. Pi over 6. So I say that because, well, we're going to need it for D. And I also say that because there are ridiculous problems out there. Like this. And they're asking for reference angle things like this. I put 256 pi over 3. No one's going to sit there and count 256 thirds. At least I hope not. What you're going to do is you're going to look at how many multiples of pi can I take away from this? You know, try and write it like that. So you're thinking about multiples of three, and you're trying to, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? No, yes, no. Okay, let's see, this is this eight to 13, not divisible by three, so, hmm. But, let's see what it is, 255. That's divisible by three, right? You can do things like this, right? But I can already stop because what's the reference angle here? Pi over three. Okay, so that's the nice way to do it. After you sort of gain the understanding of what you're doing, right? you're looking at multiples of pi to figure out which one of those multiples is closest to your angle. So for D, what do we do? We've got no pi there. So for D, we just need to think about the numerical value of pi, which is 3.14. Okay.
So what is half of pi? Well, it's a little bit more than one and a half. Right? It's like in between one and a half and 1.6, so it's like 1.5, 0.7, 1.57 maybe, something like this. So if I subtract pi from four, do I get a number that's between zero and 1.57? Right, if I take away one pi, like I've discussed here, taking away one pi, do I get a number that's between zero and pi over two? The answer is yes. Four minus three point one four is about, or actually it is, but like minus the actual pi is about. Uh, what is that? Point eight six, right? Zero less than point eight six. That's less than about one point five seven. So this is between zero and pi over two. So that's my reference angle, point eight six. If I graph it. Here's zero. Here's pi over two, which is about 1.57. Here's pi, which is about 3.14. Four is like right here. Total length going around the circle. Here's four. So the reference angle is four minus 3.14. About 0.86. But approximately. The real value of it is just this. <laughs> and this is what I would plug into the sign. <laughs> 4 minus pi. Okay. Okay, questions on any of this? That's my last problem from 4.1 where we're talking about just these sorts of things, angles, reference angles, gradients. Right. I'm gonna leave the left end here. Okay, so uh, 5.2 is on uh, trig functions. So this is where uh, rubber hits the road, um, where we're taking now these angles and we're translating them or mapping them to other values. Um, so we're using these new things called sine, cosine, tangent. And then they're reciprocal, cosecant, secant, cocant. We can even look even further into things that are related. We can look at uh, hyperbolic functions. Uh, hyperbolic sine, commonly pronounced uh, uh, shine, and cosine, hyperbolic cosine, cos and hyperbolic end, which is the silent age there. Um, but these are all trigonometric functions. Um, and what they do is they have as some input usually some number, right, some angle in the unit circle. The angle, that's what you usually input these things, although you don't have to interpret that way. One way too is to interpret the input as an angle and the output uh, is a ratio. Specifically, ratios of side lines and triangles. Um, or, if you're thinking about the unit circle, you're thinking about x-coordinates and y-coordinates. 
So 5.2, the first question I selected was just uh, question five, excuse me, question six. And it's three parts. They want to know the sine of five pi of B, the simpler cosine of less than pi over three. And C uh, is tangent of five pi. I just want to make sure. Yeah, okay, that's exactly right. Okay, in this section, what they're telling you, what you read about or learned, is that the sine and cosine tell you specifically the y coordinate and the x coordinate of the resulting point on the unit circle. So you take this angle. Find it on the unit circle, and you look at the x coordinate for cosine, and you look at the y coordinate for sine. And for tangent, <clears throat> you're looking at the ratio of the y coordinate over the x coordinate. Okay. Now these angles are all, are all really nice because we know exactly what these. Angles give us something like one of these guys. So let's find our angles and we'll just look at then the reference angles and we'll look at the specific values. Five pi over three. One third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds. So it's down here. Starting here, we go all the way around. Five, five. Okay, so I'm gonna say it once, like I, I've said it before. Who cares about this angle? Let's work with this angle. This one, I'm, that's pi over three, the reference angle. So now I, I think about what I know, what I remember from even a problem earlier today. What do I know about the x coordinate and the y coordinate at that point for an angle of pi over 3? Pi over 3 was at a 60 degree angle. So if this is 60 or pi over 3. This other one over here is pi over 6 or a 30 degree angle. This one here is 90 degrees, so pi over 2. This one's bigger than this one. This is root 3 over 2. This side length is 1. Radius is 1. So, what do we have? Sine is just the x coordinate of this point. We're moving to the right to get there, so it's positive 1 half. That's sorry, did I say sine? I meant cosine, sorry about that. So sine, <laughs> we've got this side being one half. That's great, we're moving to the right. Who cares, we're talking about sine. We're going down to get to this point. We're going down root three over two. That's what sine is telling us about. We have our result. The y coordinate at this point is just negative root three over two. We hopefully, will eventually memorize these values, these coordinates for a pi over three angle. And then we're just making sure that it fits in the right quadrant. Quadrant four means positive x, negative y. Okay, cosine of 11 pi over three. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna try and find that reference angle. And then we're gonna look at the resulting triangle. Hint, it's gonna be something like this. So I'm just gonna leave that. I've already got my thirds marked out, so I'm going to leave them there. So we're going to start here, and we're going to go 11 thirds. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, well, you know, we're at the same place. So we start here, go around once. That's 6 pi over 3. We go around almost an entire way again. That's 11 pi over 3. It's just one third pi short of 12 pi over 3, which is exactly 4 pi. And that's twice around the circle. This is great. Don't have to redraw the triangle that I just had. We already have the one half and the root 3 over 2. But this time we're talking about the x or the cosine of this angle. Well, right. Positive one half. Yeah. Tangent. Tangent is, the, is defined as the sine over the cosine. So all we're going to do here is we're going to take the sine of five pi over three, divided by the cosine of five pi over three, which is the same as the cosine of eleven pi over three. We have negative root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. Multiply both top and bottom by 2. We have negative root 3. There it is. Questions on this so far? Question 12. Next one. Okay, so question 12, another one of these. You're being asked to give the trigonometric function values of an angle. The angle is 5 pi over 4. And uh, these are the different functions. These are, you know, different ones. This is sine, cosine, tangent. This is cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Uh, the you know, second cousins, if you will, of sine, cosine, tangent. Um, they're really not that difficult to, to grasp. They've got different names, but their definitions are really simple. Cosecant, cosecant of some angle is just the same as one over the sine, same angle. Right. Secant of the angle is just one over the cosine of the same angle. And cotangent is just one over the tangent of that angle. So I never directly find these like in my, in my own work. I don't find these directly. I find these directly, and then I translate. That's the way most people do it, I think. Um, some people, I'm sure, have the familiarity with these two. Use them directly, I'm sure, or have them memorized. Um, I don't. So let's find the reference angle, and then we will find the cosine, sine, and tangent, and then we'll take the reciprocals and we'll have it. So on a unit circle, there is five pi over four. It's right here. We take the circle and we divide it into fourths all around. So one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, that's pi. One fourth more is pi. There we are. And the reference angle is pi over 4. 
So in Pi over 4, I worked this out with Nick on Zoom during one of the office hours. You've got a triangle that is isosceles, although I can't draw an isosceles triangle apparently. So this side and this side are exactly the same because with the pi over 4 angle here, you also have a pi over 4 angle here. That's 90, it's definitely an isosceles. So the x coordinate and the y coordinate are exactly the same. Right, the height of that triangle is the same as the width. And that's what we've got here. So if you work out that whole x squared plus y squared equals one, where x is equal to y, we get this. So x is root two over two. This one is the one that's easy to compute. Um, so we're working with this value, root two over two. So the coordinates of this angle are negative root 2 over 2 because we're coming back to the left that amount, and negative root 2 over 2 because we're also going down to that point. So the sine and cosine are the same. That makes things easy. They're both negative root 2 over 2, which means the cosecant is the reciprocal of negative root 2 over 2. Which is negative root 2. This here. X is 1 over the square root of 2. So if we take the reciprocal of that, yeah, definitely root 2. And because of where this angle is, both of those being, both, both of these being negative, the reciprocal of the sine is the same as the reciprocal of the cosine. So secant and cosecant are the same. This is also negative root of 2. Now, cotangent. Is sine over cosine. So it's this divided by this, which is just one. Questions about these sorts of things, computing sines, cosines, tangents? Yes. Um. I make a mistake. I wouldn't put it past me. Go ahead. Um, you, are these sine, cosine, and tangent, are those just like random words, or do they like mean something? Do they ha mean something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sure that they do. <laughs> In an old foreign language. Yes, sir. Um, yes, yeah. Uh, I'll look into that for you, because I don't know. Uh, I'm sure that they do mean something. Um, tangent has a definite meaning nowadays. If something's tangent to something else, you know, it's out of nowhere. So this triangle thing here, okay, yeah. Um, okay, so for, we go back to this triangle. I sort of just told you what these things were and said you should have them memorized, right? Just like I did. Uh, that's because you can't really just compute these with the Pythagorean theorem unless you have extra information. Um, this one you can actually compute. So let me take you through that. Um, so this, yeah, big just there. All right. So for for a right triangle that is isosceles, that means the two short legs are equal in length. So we have this one. I'm going to get a y value. This is the x value. You know that the radius on the unit circle is 1, so the hypotenuse is 1. If I say that x is y, 
And then the Pythagorean theorem turns into this thing. X squared plus Y squared equals X squared plus X squared, or Y squared plus Y squared, whichever you like. That's two X squared. And because this is a right triangle, we know that this squared plus this squared is just that squared. That's just one. You can solve that for X, right? And X is just a square root of one half, which is one over root two, which if you rewrote, you know, the rational denominator would be root two over two. Um, That's, that's how we get that. What that means is on any one of these points around the unit circle where we've gone exactly a quarter of the way through half of the circle. So here's pi over four, here's pi over four, here's pi over four, here's pi over four. At all of these points, we know that the x coordinates and the y coordinates are the same and they're root two over two with a plus or minus sign. So these are both positive. Here the x one is negative, the y is positive. Here they're both negative. Here the x is positive, the y is negative. Okay. This is like a really, really nice special triangle. Um, I still remember sitting in Mrs. Frank's geometry classroom back in 2000. I think. I still remember her teaching us about these things and thinking, oh, good, more things to memorize. <laughs> I don't know why. I, don't know, I guess I just like mental torture like that. Memorizing weird numbers like this. But. Another big shout out to Mrs. Frank, I guess, on the internet. There you go. Thanks, Mrs. Frank. <laughs> Other questions about this? That's great. Um, you know, things are coming back to me about your question. I think secant is a common word as well. And it's, it's a point, it's a, it's a line. The secant is a line that connects two points. Um, the secant approaches the tangent line, if you know the definitions. So if I take a random curve, and I say, hey, what's the slope of the point at this? Well, what is the slope of the line at this point? What we're looking for is the slope of the tangent line. Tangent, it barely graces that line right at that point. You can approximate that by drawing secant lines. These are all secant. They're not the same as this, but as your points grow closer and closer, the secant lines, their slopes, approach the slope of the tangent line. So the secant approaches tangent um, in the limit. So there's a little bit more mathematical backing on those, on this word, and tangent. Yeah, but I, I'm not sure. All right, 24. Okay, find the value of each of the six trig functions if it is defined at the given numbers. 24. And we're asked to find all of them. So sine, cosine, pi over two, tangent, pi over two. If you do this right, you only have to find half of them. Okay. Uh, you can either, depending on how you think, find these three first and then just get those for free, or you can find these three first and then get these three for free. I prefer.
for these three. So that's what we're going to do. Pi over two on the unit circle is straight up from the orbit. Circle, we think about angles, we know this is pi, so half of pi is straight up. Right? That's, that's this angle here. So the question is what are the x and y coordinates of this point? x is 0, y is 1 because I'm the unit circle. So right there, we've got cosine and sine. So what's tangent? Tangent is sine over cosine. All right, everyone, what's one over zero? Who knows? Okay, good. It's undefined. Okay. So what about cosecant pi over two? That's the reciprocal of this. It's one. What's the reciprocal of zero? One over zero, right? One time. Same as ten. All right, what's the reciprocal of undefined? It's one. Or is it zero? Zero, right? Oh. Think about what tangent was. It was one divided by zero. The reciprocal is zero divided by. The reciprocal, I have what I'm reciprocal of tangent to the reciprocal of 1 over 0, which is 0 over 1, which is. Okay, okay, we got it. Sorry, my mouth is going too fast. My brain is catching up. I said 1 is 0. Questions on finding these sorts of things again. I mean, this is just another problem. Uh, something that I told uh, Nick to do during last office hour was right before a quiz, right before a test, um, do something like this. Make a big table, okay? Just a big table. And just start listing angles, common nice angles between zero and pi over two, okay? So sixths of pi, fourths of pi, thirds of pi, pi, We can also get, uh, let's see, two, six, three, six, no, it's it. Just do this. And then start filling this table in. Right? Sine of zero. The height, zero. The width, one. The ratio, zero. Sine of pi over six is one and a half. This one's root three over two. Ratio of this divided by that is one over root three. Which is root 3 over 3. I was 4, everything is root 2 over 2. Not this one, the ratio of those two, which is 1. Pi over 3, we flip these two things. So we've got sine is one, uh, root 3 over 2. This one's 1 half, the ratio flip this is just root 3. Pi over 2 is what we just had, so just do that, right? When you have it, or when you're getting it, you know, it'll be a little slow, maybe. Maybe five minutes to do the whole thing. But if you do this a few times, and then right before the quiz, right before the test, when you do this, then for like the sixth time, it's going to take you a minute. Okay? And then because you're not supposed to have notes, just crumple it up and throw it over your shoulder. But it'll be right there still, okay? Right in your mind. So just write that out. Really doesn't take long.
I didn't write these because, hey, just take the reciprocals of these things and you got it. Something to the power of five. Can we do something where the denominator is five? Yeah, but I won't have it memorized. <laughs> uh, probably not, no. Yeah, um, we, you could do things like that. Definitely. Um, however, for some reason, um, these are the numbers that are typically chosen when teaching this material or when putting them in books. Let me. Six, three, four. I'm calling out the denominators that I see. Six, three, four, three, four. There's no fives. The twos, there's ones. Uh, nope. Not in this section. Not in any single problem here. So, uh, for some reason, people that write books, people that teach this stuff, um, they stick to this set of denominators. I think the idea is that if you really wanted to compute for any base down there, any denominator, you'd probably just use a calculator, right, in practice. Um, but to teach the idea of what you're looking at, x coordinates, y coordinates, or legs of triangles, you know, you don't need every number in the book. So just pick some of them and use those to teach the triangles or to teach the circle ideas. Um, and then leave the other ones to a calculator. Um, or something we'll get at in the next section. Okay, so let's see what we're doing. We're doing okay on time. So the next question is question 28. And in this one, they give us point. And they're asking us what the trig functions are. Okay. So, what's the cosine of this, of the angle that ends at this point? What's the cosine of the angle that ends at this point? Negative one half. Cosine is always the x squared, so there it is. How about the sine? Don't be shy. Yes, it's the y coordinate. And how about the tangent? You don't have to actually tell me. You can tell me how to get it, baby. This divided by that, sine over cosine. So it's negative root three. Okay, so. Okay. There you go. So if you're given a point on the unit circle, the x coordinate is the cosine, the y coordinate is the sine, the ratio of the two is the tangent. To find the other three trig functions, you take reciprocals. You just flip the fraction. All right, so that's that question. Uh, 32 is similar. Um, this one's interesting, huh? Here the point is, Oy. Uh, 40 over 41. Whenever I see something like this, I always ask a question before I answer everything else. Is this even on the unit circle? You know what I mean? You don't think it is? Yeah, it's, it's more than 41 if you add up to the number. 
We're not just adding the numbers, right? We're squaring them first. Square those numbers and add them up. Do you get one? The answer is yes. But that's a question you should ask yourself before blindly moving into saying, "Hey, that's the cosine. Hey, that's the sine, the tangent, the fraction of the two. 1600 is 40 squared. 41 squared is 1681. Plus 81 times squared over 16 is one." You clearly get 1681 or 16. But you definitely should ask yourself that question. So, oh, sorry. Cosine, sine, tangent is 940. Just looking at the previous problem. Okay. That was really fast. Questions about that. Pretty much the same process, just you're given the point, not the angle. Okay, uh, Shaq, I saw your question just now. Can you do another one like that, like this one? That might have been an old question. There's no timestamp. Yeah, yeah. Um, you already did another one like it, so I'm oh, okay. Okay, perfect. Yeah. It's in the chat window, I'm, I'm not going to see it because I'm over there at the board, but if you speak, then I can hear you. I've got my uh, sound pumped up here. Okay, so I'm going to move on to section 5.3. This is all very foundational stuff here. Okay, so I picked number eight, graphing. Okay, so before I spend some time graphing this, um, do I need to show you a sine and cosine graph first? Do I need to rigorously plot one first, or can I just jump straight to something more complicated? This is a question for everyone, even online. So we're good to move on with this example. Sure, sure, I can. Okay, so I'll plot cosine, right? And then this problem will be made much more complicated. Of g of x, cosine. We've been in this class long enough to know that when you plot a function, you just pick a bunch of points and find out what you get. And then try your best to figure out what's going on in between. So here we go. What points do you know for cosine? Because I don't think you should do this sort of thing. <laughs> Pick nine. Ninety. I don't think you should pick that one either. I don't know what that number. I don't know what the cosine of ninety is. Oh, ninety degrees. Yes. Yes, you should pick ninety degrees. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I'm gonna write it pi over two. So that's the equivalent. That's 90 degrees. Perfect. Yeah. Pi. Perfect. 
So let's, let's just figure out real quick what we get for these three. Cosine of zero, that's the x coordinate. It's over on the far right already, right? Point at zero, so or at one, zero, so it's one. Here, he said correctly, zero. Here, negative one, right? What's the next one? We should take maybe. Yeah, one of these guys, two of these guys, three of these guys. And then let's pick two pop. Good. Zero again. Get here, we get one again, and this pattern will repeat. One, zero, negative one, zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, one. So when we go to plot this, here's one, here's negative one. At zero, we're at zero, we're at one. At pi over two, We're at zero. At pi, we're at negative one. At three pi over two, at zero again. And at two pi, at one again. So if, if you followed my advice to a T, you would draw sort of a V. But uh, if we pick a couple points in between, you know, we definitely know pi over four. We can do that one. It's root two over two. It's just bigger than one half. It's quite a long thing, actually. Uh, we know pi over three. Which is cosine pi over three. Five or six. Okay. Yep. So we're, if you if you found out what these numerical values were, you'd find that it does something like this, so it's curving downwards like this. You're gonna do the exact same thing down here with a one half value right about there, and then uh, root two over two, and then root three over two, and it's gonna look like this. And it'll do the same thing here, the same thing here, and it'll do the same thing forever and across. In both directions. It's a wave. Okay, so that's cosine at x. Um, if I were to look at just one period of it, so from one spot to the corresponding spot, that's a period. Um, so we got one period here, we've got another period here. I could have chosen any period. I could have chosen from here to here, right? That is technically one period of cosine. Um, but a period is just from one spot to its corresponding point. So it's just literally like a period in time if you view the x-axis as a time axis. Usually that's what they ask you to graph. Usually you're asked to graph one period or two periods. So that, that's why I say that. So here, getting back to this, what have we done to our graph? We've negated it and we've added two to it, right? So what does that do to the graph? X, yeah, the negative sign reflects it, right, across the x-axis. Wherever we had something positive, now it's negative. So if I were to plot negative cosine, negative the cosine starts down here, goes up, negative cosine x. And then what does the 2 do? Shifts it up, right? We take every output and we increase it by 2. 
value of cosine, negate it, lift it up by two. Right, if you think about uh, this first plot, you plug in zero, you're going to get one, then you negate it, you get negative one, and two minus negative one is three. Sorry, I said it with two negative signs in there. Two minus one is one. Sorry about that. Wow, too many negative signs floating in there. So again, we, the first point was here at negative one in that original graph. Just backtrack a little bit. But two minus one, one. So we're going to shift this up here. We're going to do that for every point. Okay, so we're just shifting the whole thing up to. So I'm going to do my best there. Back. This is just a rough sketch. Uh, we've got zero. We've got here. It's a part two. Here we've got. We've got some um, part two again. So it, you know, we have that, uh, we have that section of the while ago. When we talk about transforming graphs. This is hugely important in sections like this. So, yep, we've got time. So we'll do another one. is to graph two-thirds of cosine. Here's the cosine again. Cosine starts up here, travels down. Here, travels up, and there. This is cosine. The negative sign flips it. So we have something like this now. What is this negative? What is this two thirds, rather? So we can take it point by point. When we plug in zero, we get negative one because of the negative sign. If we multiply that by two thirds, we get negative two thirds. So it starts here. This point is moved to there. How about this point? Still zero. Plug in by two, we get zero. We multiply it by two thirds, we still have zero. How about this point? Add the height of one. Oh, we multiply it by two thirds. We get two thirds. So what happens is we shrink this graph vertically, but you get the exact same period. Okay. All righty. That's done. And twenty. It's the last one that I picked. Um, graph sine of 2x. So I, this one's sine, not cosine. Um, so you can't rely on that, but we still can refute uh, the math, the values of sine. But also, the input is scaled by two. So let's just 
make a table like this. So what we're going to do here is sort of an interesting, maybe an interesting thing. Um, we're going to pick nice values for 2x. So you would say 90 degrees is probably another good value. So I want 0 here. I want 90 degrees here. I want 30 degrees, 60 degrees, right? These different values that are nice to compute. Because we plug 2x in, right? We're not plugging x necessarily in design work. We're evaluating 2x. So I want these to be nice. Then we're going to backtrack. If x, 2x is 0, then x is 0. If 2x is pi over 2, then x is pi over 4. If x is pi over 3, sorry, 2x, then pi over 6 is x. See, I, we want to plug in these nice values because we know the values assigned for those. So just translate backwards into what your actual x value is. So what do we have for those? Sine of zero is zero. Sine of pi over two is one. Sine of pi over three. It's a 60 degree angle. The triangle is taller than it is wide. Great practice. What is it? Yes. Yeah. Did you ever do three and one half? They come in pairs. This is the big angle. Pi over six is the other one. So this big side, this small side, one half, three here, two. Okay, so we can keep doing this, right? We get to we go to pi here, then sign it back to zero. But that means we're at pi over two here. If we go to three pi over two, I'm skipping ahead. That's nice because that's at the you know, bottom part of the unit circle, so it's negative pi. And then we come back up to zero at two pi. But if we plug in this for two x, well then x is three pi over four. Can you see how I made that table? I, was, I wanted this to be nice, so I chose nice ones. And then I just worked back to x. And the reason you need to do that is because this axis is not the two x axis, it's the x axis. So, what do we get for zero? We get zero. What do we get for pi over four? Oh, we get one. Okay. Plug in pi over four, and that gives you pi over two, and that gives you one. So now I'm just going to go down to. 3 pi over 2, uh, rather pi over 2, 0, and then 3 pi over 2, that's negative 1, and uh, 2 pi, we're back up to 0, oh, I didn't write it in the table. So this graph is like that, and it continues on like this forever and forever. In so, what happened? Okay. Uh, this is just pi. I said two pi. Didn't I? This is three pi over four. I'm off the charts. Then we can numerically at pi over four. Good at pi over two. 
We're good. Okay, we're good. Okay, so what happens? <laughs> Normally, sine isn't this switch. Right? When you multiply the input by two, what you've done is you've compressed the inputs. Notice one period here at the total length of i. What's the normal period for, for sine? It's 2 pi. We're at 0, we're at 1, we're at 0, we're at negative 1, back to 0. That's 2 pi normally. We just did it in half that. 